Hey guys, it's Nick from Grayscale Gorilla, and in this video, I wanted to show you a quick intro into X Particles. It's a plugin I've been playing with for the last couple months, and I wanted to basically show you a few quick scene files, how to get started, how to set things up with X Particles, and kind of show you how powerful it is and how versatile it is. So let's head on into Cinema 4D, and let me show you X Particles. You can see X Particles is a tab up here, and it's really quick to get started. You could just set up a, a particle system, and right away you'll have this button right here called Add Basic Setup. And this is going to give you a basic rundown of um, kind of giving you the emitter and giving you a, a few folders to try to keep things organized. You hit play and you have a basic emitter. Now you've seen something like this before with, you know, maybe the particle system that comes with Cinema. But what X Particles does is give you a lot more control and really give you a lot more particles to work with. Um, so you can do some really fun things with it. So let me show you, uh, in this case, let's not emit from this rectangle. Uh, let's instead go into the emitter and emit from a sphere instead. So now we have particles going in all directions. And let's set up a really quick scene where there's a bunch of particles flying out. So now, uh, instead of just a 1,000 uh, particles a second, let's do something crazy like a hundred thousand right so now you can see all these particles flying around it renders very quickly and we can also control these so we can go to our system uh, set up here and really quickly we can grab a modifier like turbulence and hit play and now you're gonna see the turbulence is gonna start to move our particles in different ways it's not just emitting all at once um, so what do we do from here well when we hit render nothing happens you have to texture your particles to make them visible so we can go to shader X particles material and add a new material on top of our emitter and when we hit render now you can see it's gonna render all these particles but they're gonna be kind of large. So we can go into our emitter and we can adjust the size. We can go to our emission tab here and say, hey, uh, how about like 0.8 instead of five, right? So now let's hit play, let's hit render, and you can see we have much uh, better sizing issues here. So it still looks a little plain, what else can we do? Well, we could vary the size of our particles by going into the texture, into the material and saying size, variation adding randomness we could also change the color so instead of just the green which is kind of the default here with your emitter you can change your uh, color of your particles in the display or you can actually just change it right here so we could say it's a random color so now when we hit render it's gonna be random uh, or we could choose from a gradient so you know it gives us this blue to white gradient in this case maybe we can uh, kind of just pick a couple colors here that hopefully look good together and let's hit play, and now we have our cloud. Well, it's still a little bit flat, so check this out. We can use lights and or, and set up some lights and actually cast shadows on these um, to give it a little bit more depth and to make it feel like real particles, not just sprites on the screen. So we do have to enable shadows, and we also have to go into our texture and say illumination, not flat, right, because that'll make it look flat and car kind of cartoony there uh, we want to use diffuse now diffuse is gonna make it look like little spheres basically so now you can see our light is lighting from this side it's a little bit dark so let's go ahead and just crank that up so we could see everything here there we go so check that out we have all the all this light coming from this side we have all these shadows we can actually add a second light even add like a fill light over here you know like a little bit of blue you've seen me do this in other tutorials but look at now it's filling in and now it actually has depth um, we can even move this light and just kind of get it out of the way a little bit more so now when we hit render you can see there's actual depth to this particle system not just you know flat dots so um, let's turn up this brightness just a little bit more and see if we can really blow out yep that's what I want and maybe pull this back to give it even more depth there we go. So pretty cool. Really fast to set up, and you can see we're rendering a ton of particles all at once um, using uh, using the renderer. And so what else can we do? So let, let me do another scene file. Let's get a little bit more intricate in what we could do. In this file, um, I wanted to show you more of the dynamics and collisions and fun stuff we could do with X particles. So let's grab a system, and let's do the same thing. Let's add a basic setup. And in this case, we're going to set up kind of a quick rain uh, particle system. So let me sh show you how fast we could do this. We can kind of rotate our emitter around so it's coming from the sky. And we can also just, you know, scale everything up 
and uh, let's just move it just out of frame, right? So here we go. We got a bunch of particles falling, but it doesn't look like rain. So what can we do? Well, we can add gravity, right? Because it's not just falling evenly there. So let's go to our modifiers and add some gravity. And now you can see it's speeding up as it comes down. Um, we can also kind of turn down our speed of our original particles. So maybe slow it down. So now we have a little bit of velocity. And while we're here, let's go to display and set up lines. And this gives, gives us kind of a trail and gives us kind of this rain feel. Well, now we need something to for the rain to hit, right? So let's grab a plane, scale this up. And then what we have is a collider tag. And if you've used the dynamics in Cinema 4D, you could see how quick this is to set up. It's really similar. You could just set this up. And now it's not just objects. It's every particle has its own uh, kind of collision and dynamics and bounce. So we can, you know, vary the bounce and we can also add turbulence and wind. So let's go into our modifiers here and say we want wind. And actually wind has turbulence built in. So let's just turn on the wind. And now we have our rain system here. It's a little bit strong. Let's just set it lower and let's turn our turbulence up, but not too high. So now hopefully we have some rain. We have um, the particles falling from the sky and our raindrops, I guess, and it hits the ground and they bounce around. Well, wouldn't it be cool if when it hits the ground, it actually splashes more water around, more drops around, more than just one, right? So in other words, what if we could have more particles be born when they touch the ground? Well, it used to be with other um, uh, particle systems, it would be a lot of code and you'd have to like kind of script this up or use Expresso and stuff. With X particles, it's really nice. In, a, in so many ways, they make this just a button to turn on and then tell you tell it what to do. So you set up your parameters and you don't have to worry about any code or anything crazy. So check this out. In our collision tab, or in our tag, we have this spawn on collision tab that we could say enabled, right? Now all we have to do is say the spawning emitter. So we have to make a new emitter. Let's go to emit. And uh, just to differentiate between the, the first particles and the second ones, we can give this a sep second color here. And then we can uh, also make these lines so they have like look like little splashes. And um, let's see what else we could do. So now we just have to drag this into our tab. So spawn on collision, spawning emitter. We could rename this spawn. And then we can come up here and drag this in. There it is. Okay, so now let's see what happens. We could rewind, we could play, and now when it hits the floor, it should spawn a bunch more particles. Well, it looks like a lot, so we can first of all t tone this down. Maybe it's five splashes. The other thing we have to look at are these two checkboxes. We don't want it to spawn every time it touches the ground because then every other spawn will touch a ground and, and, and every time it bounces around, basically it's gonna make five more particles. So what we wanna do is say spawn once only. So when you hit the ground, spawn it once and then that's it okay then below that it says kill original particle after spawning we also want that we don't want the original green one so now it's not spawning at every time it touches the ground it just does it once and we have our little blue ones right so how can we make these look more like splashes right now they're just kind of flying around well we could say random spherical we could say source particle we could d basically decide how these things are splashing i like the random one uh, but I think we need more bounce on the ground. So let's go to our tag and let's kind of scroll up and say more bounce. So check this out. Now it should bounce a lot more. We have our little splashes and let's add more friction because we don't want these splashes to slide around. We want them to, to kind of collect in little puddles. So let's add some more frames here. Let's see what this looks like over time. So now you can see every raindrop triggers a splash and these splashes can actually be added to wet maps and things to actually change your texture on your ground. Uh, we actually have a, a tutorial about that coming up pretty soon where we're gonna show you how to make the rain affect the texture of the ground so it looks like it's uh, making puddles and reflections and, and stuff like that it's pretty cool but i wanted to show you the basic setup there it is you have all the control you need to make a, a realistic um, 
rain uh, particle system. And I want to show you one more thing, which is X Particles is compatible with a lot of other features in Cinema. So, so things like MoGraph, uh, it actually works a lot like MoGraph. So if you're familiar with the way that MoGraph works with its kind of clones and effector model, um, X Particles works really well. You know, it kind of has its emitter and uh, modifiers model. So let me show you how it works with other things in Cinema 4D. So let's create a, a new setup real quick. And really quickly, let's just go add a turbulence effector. And let's see what we, ha what, what, what we have. We have all of these particles coming out, flying around, um, and making a little bit of turbulence. Well, in part of X particles is the ability to kind of trace every particle. So kind of like the tracer, but with a lot more options. So check this out. If we go to generator objects, we can do things like skinning to make like liquid style effects. We could do all this stuff, but right here um, is trails. So let's back up, let's hit play. And you can see now we're making trails for every uh, particle. And what can we do with these trails? Well, we can tell the trails to be shorter. So we could just say like, okay, you're only 10 frames long, right? Uh, so now, you know, they actually have too many particles to see that. So let's just tone down the amount of particles really quickly, just 100 particles a second. And now you can see each particle is like its own um, uh, tail. You know, we can, we can do whatever we want with this stuff. So now we can add, again, things like gravity um, to give it some weight there so it kind of falls we could uh kind of i'm going to tone down the gravity quite a lot so they so they arc down but they mostly just kind of follow the turbulence so the reason i wanted to show you all this uh all these other tracer settings and and tail settings is because it works with hair so there are ways you can texture this and the best and kind of quickest and easiest way is to make a new hair material and drop it right on your trail. So now when we render, it's actually rendering hairs, which is pretty cool. So you have all the control over the, the thickness, right? We could like make these super thin and we can make it really like a bright obnoxious color and make this really fun and uh, everything works. So like lights, you know, work, with the specular of the hair and everything you expect to happen works. So let's let this play out. Let's make the trails a lot longer and let's do things like add uh, a circle system. So there's also a modifier called direction that's really fun. And direction, I could say circular direction and I could say, okay, make some, some kind of various um, circles and kind of trend downwards as it the gravity pulls it down. Let's make this a little bit longer. And you can see we're getting just kind of this abstract um, bunch of bunch, bunch of particles kind of all tracing together. So we have these like hair effects that are really cool. Um, and you, of course you can combine effects. So if you want hair effects on top of regular particles, we could also do that and say, hey, uh, let's make a new X particles material. Let's drop that on the emitter. And in this case, let's make them um, a single color. Let's just make them white. And now at the tip of every uh, particle, uh, you're, it's gonna make a, a an actual dot and then you're gonna see the hair around it. So let's of course shrink that down because we don't need it to be that big. We can make it really small. And now we have particles that drive around and those will lead the, the animation and the hair will kind of follow around. So, um, Let's go just quickly set up a render and let me show you how fast all this renders. Uh, all frames, cool. And then let's crank this back up. Let's, uh, let's make this a little bit more random and uh, let's go to our, our uh, not where is it? Here it is, direction. And we can kind of uh, make these bigger circles so they're a little bit more random and more variation. We can also do this really get some kind of unique pattern going on with all of these all of these hairs kind of flying around so pretty interesting uh look here and let's see how fast this renders so here we go render settings output uh 1280 by 720 that's a little big for what we're uh in fact let's just keep it large we'll, i'll shrink it just so you can see how fast this renders all frames go yes okay we're going to shrink this down uh I think I can shrink to fit. There we go. So this is a quarter of the size. Um, and you can see it's rendering so quickly. It's, you know, less than a, a frame up, uh, uh, a second of frame. 
And even if we cranked up the amount of objects here, so right now we just have 100, but when we start turning things up, you're gonna see um, it really keeps up with a lot, a lot of particles. You know, this is designed for millions and millions of particles, and uh, we're just kind of starting to play with this plugin. We're just starting to see what's possible with it. Um, Right now I'm learning a lot about the kind of liquid and skinning effects where you can start to do um, kind of solid objects, not just particles, with all these uh, point clouds and, and really make some cool looking stuff. So um, basically I wanted to make this video to give you a quick uh, kind of overview of some of the quick things I've learned, some of the, the, the short little things that you could set up with X particles, mainly to show you how fast it is to, to get going and hopefully how fun it is just to experiment with this stuff. So expect uh, some more tutorials coming soon about X particles as I learn about it. Uh, we're playing with it a lot at the studio and uh, hopefully have some really cool effects coming soon. So stay tuned for those. If you guys see a particle system effect or something that you think might be possible or that you think is really cool, send it our way and uh, through Twitter is probably a good idea or actually in the comments on this blog post. Um, I'd love to hear from you guys and try to learn this stuff. X particle has been really fun to play with and uh, kind of got, you know, it's getting me all excited like when MoGraph came out, you know, playing with all these new effectors and playing with all these ways and combining things in different ways and seeing what comes out of it. So look for more X particle stuff soon. If you want to learn more about it, check it out. We have it on the store now at Grayscale Gorilla. Uh, at, at our uh, store. You can go check out more of what it does. We have some nice renders there as well. Um, so anyway, thanks for watching. I will see you in another video really soon. Uh, bye, everybody.